Hey guys, welcome to episode number 597. Today is Wednesday, so it's DIY Wednesday. And yes, the stand is painted behind me, but we're gonna save that for another day. Today, we're doing something a lot more exciting than painting, and that is talking about how to make your own DIY aquarium bonsai driftwood. But before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and if you want to help support this channel you can go check out myaquariumbox.com and bettaoasis.com all right guys i'm sure you've seen the aquarium bonsai driftwood listed for sale online it's all over facebook all the time uh, a number of people carry it you can find it on ebay all over the place but they're really really expensive very cool looking, but really expensive. And here's the secret. They're not that hard to make. All you have to do is gather a few supplies. Now, these pieces of driftwood are not actually bonsai trees. It's not like someone grew these over the course of 20 or 30 years and then the thing died and then someone transformed it into a piece of driftwood for an aquarium, um, these are just regular old pieces of driftwood that have been modified just a little bit, and I'm gonna show you how. Um, the first thing you need to do is find a piece of wood. And in this case, last year when we tore down the greenhouse, I had to rip up a few plants in the process, uh, namely some rhododendrons and azalea plants and I'm not exactly sure which one this one is. It's either a rhod rhododendron or an azalea. This is actually the root structure of that plant, and that's exactly what you want to use. You don't want to use the limbs or the twigs or the branches of a piece of wood because those are actually a lot more fragile, brittle, and they'll fall apart. This, the roots, are a lot stronger and they will last quite a bit longer. They're more dense, it sinks faster, and it doesn't rot and fall apart nearly as fast. Now, obviously this is a little bit of a mess. It kind of looks like a, uh, I don't know, ghostly or witchy type tree, but uh, this is exactly what it looked like when I pulled it out of the ground a year ago. And this is the important part this needs to be seasoned. You need to tear it out of the ground, throw it in a pile, and then wait an entire year for this thing to dry out, and uh, then it's ready to start um, working with it. So we have a number of different pieces of wood here. This is obviously the, the biggest one, but even smaller pieces of wood uh, are good to use as well. Get as much material as you can, and these can be plants that uh, have died and uh, you're just ripping them out of the ground, or if uh, you don't have enough plants um, nearby to you, you can always contact a landscaping company because they're ripping these things out of the ground every single day, um, dead or not. Some people just want their yards replanted every once in a while. Uh, and if you don't want to do that, you can always go check out your local stump dump uh, or wherever they dispose of lawn waste uh, in your town. There's one in every single town and uh, they usually just have like loads and loads of stuff. Um, you have to be careful when you pick through it. I actually did this a year ago. Didn't find any driftwood really per se, but uh, it is a good location where you could find quite a few um, root structures to work with uh, for your project. Anyways, this is practically free. You just have to dig it out of the ground and wait a year before you can actually use it. So you have to think ahead with this one, but it's not that uh, difficult to do. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is actually use a bonsai tool to help clean up this piece of driftwood. As you can see, there are a lot of very small rootlets that are all over the place. This is like a giant tangle, tangled mess uh, of a piece of driftwood. And this doesn't look like it's something that you want to stick in your aquarium, not yet. What you want to do 
is take any sort of cutting tool and locate any of the small um, the small roots and just start cutting them off. What you're looking for are just the larger pieces. You want to keep the large pieces and anything that's small, anything that's sort of sticking off to the sides, you just want to start cutting these things wholesale. Just want to get rid of them so that you can clean that up and uh, just look at your largest branches here. And this may take a while. Um, there's not a whole lot of thought that goes into this process. All you're doing is looking for the smallest roots or rootlets and you're just cutting them off. Uh, usually you'll have like a main tap root. There's like a couple, a couple large roots here. Uh, and then some smaller, uh, like medium sized roots uh, as well. Anything that is basically big and holding this thing in the ground, those are the ones you want to keep. And anything that's sort of just like a side shoot that's sticking off from those main roots, those are the ones you want to cut off because um, it's not going to look very zen like, it's not going to look very bonsai like in the end because they're usually at like 90 degree angles like going off in a different direction and what you want to do is just focus on sort of like an actual bonsai you want to focus on the large branches the one the, all the branches that are sort of facing in the same direction and uh, all of these little roots are just getting in the way and confusing uh, what this thing should actually look like. So this is a process that could take uh, five minutes or it could take the better part of an hour. I guess it really just depends on how big the piece of uh, driftwood is that you're starting with. But regardless, you can already see that we're starting to make a difference here, cleaning this up, getting a lot of those smaller roots out of the way and um, once you've done that what you're going to be left with is something that looks more like this all right all of these are the largest roots that existed um, on this particular stump as we were creating it and what I did was I even started to cut some of the large roots off that weren't sort of headed in the right direction. Now this isn't the most elegant or beautiful piece of driftwood, but it is the one that I had on hand uh, and it is the one that I'm using in this demonstration. The important thing to note here, and this is the secret behind making your own DIY bonsai aquarium driftwood, is that this branch here didn't start here. I epoxied this branch to this portion of the trunk, um, which was pre-existing. So this is a completely different piece of wood here. And I just decided to stick it on right here. And if we look real close, you can see the epoxy here. And if you look real close on any of the bonsai driftwood that you see online, you will also see epoxy all over the place on those pieces of driftwood. Now, you might be asking yourself, what epoxy do I use? This is the thing that took me a little while to figure out. Uh, and this is the epoxy that I've used, and it's the one that I would recommend to you. It's called Quick Wood and it's by JB Weld. And I even contacted JB Weld. Um, I looked up the material data safety sheet. I uh, contacted the company directly, spoke to someone from JB Weld, and made sure that this product is in fact aquarium safe. Now, uh, when you use epoxies like this, there's a number of different epoxies on the market. Some are for uh, RV, marine, boats. Those are okay too. There's uh, like this Seachem uh, Coral Crete. If you are uh, you know, doing anything with corals, uh, that uh, may work as well. But Quickwood is actually already a light brown color.
color, uh, so it does blend in pretty well with uh, any of the projects you're working on. And as you can see, the epoxy has two parts, it's sort of the, the brown uh, outer layer and then the white inner layer. All you have to do is cut off a piece of this, mix it up with your fingers until it's nice and blended, and then you can use that to um, bind your pieces of driftwood together. Now, an important thing to consider when you're doing this is to make sure that you've sanded off uh, all of the bark um, that may be in the way because bark is gonna flake off, fall off over time. If I had a sandblaster, I would sandblast this thing beforehand. Um, but once you have two surfaces that are nice and clean, no bark left, all you have to do is put a little bit of epoxy there, stick it together, and then hold it for a little while, or what I did was I just tipped it up on end and let it dry uh, all by itself. And as you can see, that has made a pretty good connection there. Uh, it's not falling apart, and uh, this was 24 hours of drying time. Um, when I was doing this, it was a little bit finicky to sort of get it positioned exactly the way I wanted it and to hold it there. So then I did a little experiment using um, like a, another piece of wood here. And as we can see here, we've got another large piece of epoxy here holding this piece of wood here to this piece of wood here. Uh, there were two separate pieces, but the difference here is I drilled a small hole and then I attached a nail. Uh, I think this is like a stainless steel or brad nail or finish nail. And uh, you can pick those up at any hardware store. Uh, the important thing is I drilled it and then uh, like I pre-drilled it on both sides, right? On this side and then also like on this side you can see there's a little drill hole there. And then what you can do is you can attach these sort of like an armature. Um, if you've done like sculpture or anything like that, you can attach these and then you can sort of swivel it and position it exactly where you want it. And as you can see, it is sort of already attached by itself um, just because it's pressure fit there with that nail in between. But then what you can do is, once you've got it in the right spot, you can put your epoxy all around it like I've done here. And then you guarantee that um, the connection is solid and uh, that you have your branch sort of going in the exact direction that you want it. And I found that worked really well because um, you weren't relying on the soft epoxy before it was dry to sort of hold that uh, in the position that you wanted it because it will sort of move uh, a little bit uh, if you're not careful about how it's positioned or how you set it down or whatever. So that was the tip I found to um, getting these pieces connected exactly the way I wanted it and uh, getting them uh, epoxied up and drying. So with all of that in mind, what it really comes down to is your own creativity and the uh, pieces of wood that you have laying around. Uh, for me, you know, I like finding stuff that's free, stuff that's uh, sitting around the house uh, or out in the backyard. So I choose to use um, the wood that I can find and collect. If you don't have that available to you, um, you can always buy just regular driftwood. Uh, spider wood is a great driftwood type to use for a project like this. You're gonna want a mix of sizes, small, medium, large, and uh, then what you can do is you can take smaller pieces kind of like this, and you can take larger pieces like this, and you can connect them any way you want to make your DIY bonsai driftwood. Now, I am not a master at this by any stretch of the imagination, and this is actually a terrible example of a bonsai, but it does demonstrate the concept of epoxying two pieces of wood together. 
Um, if you're looking to get something that looks more like a bonsai tree, uh, a couple things that I would watch out for and try to emulate is making sure that all of the branches are sort of sweeping and heading in the same direction. Um, making sure that like the trunk of the tree is visible in the front. And if it doesn't look immediately like a tree, like this one is a little too flat and it looks a little too much like uh, a root structure. What you can do is you can chop off entire pieces. Like if I was to continue with this, what I would do is I would cut off this entire front piece and you can flip it around and point it upward or point it in a different direction by just epoxying it back in place. So you have control to tweak and twist and attach other little pieces to your driftwood to make your perfect DIY aquarium bonsai driftwood. Anyways guys, that's the DIY project. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, I've actually been looking for a aquarium safe epoxy to uh, basically glue wood together for this project. I've been looking for it for a very long time. And so I was happy to finally find Quickwood by JB Weld. And uh, if you want to test this out and try it yourself, I'll leave a link to this product in the description down below. Get yourself some driftwood, either collect it yourself or go buy some and then start cutting it up and sticking it back together because that's how you're gonna get the perfect piece of driftwood. You don't have to find it, you can manufacture it because that's what a lot of other people are doing and they're charging a lot of money for it. Anyways guys, I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you guys later.